Okay, um, I just wanted to kind of talk about some ideas I've been playing with recently uh, using the Crow module. <laughs> Sorry, this is kind of three screen setup, but I'll get used to it. Crow is from Mono, or it's Mono uh, when Whimsical Wraps uh, collaboration, and it's basically a tiny computer that lives inside your modular. Uh, it speaks voltages uh, and shapes of voltages, envelopes, gates, elbows, that kind of thing, uh, and it can read them and it can put them out. Uh, and it's got like a, a Lua scripting environment inside it, which makes it really nice. You can kind of do the sorts of things I've been using Super Collider for, but I've got all my modular hardware uh, and sound generation uh, to play with, so it's a lot more hands-on, uh, a lot more immediate, which I really am I'm enjoying. So I've been experimenting quite a lot with rhythm recently. Um, you may, if you follow my music channel, have seen my Rilabi experiments. Rilabi is uh, really non-grid. It's kind of a chaotic clock generator uh, that's nearly a rhythm, but not quite a linear. Today's experiments are more linear. Um, I've been uh, playing with generating rhythms that are a bit more uh, uh, mainstream, normal. <laughs> I don't know what the word for it is, but linear. Um, so th th this this is the, the code here in Plymouth. So let me just see if I can find the cursor. So the idea is, this comes from a paper I came across, um, and it's an alternating rhythm. So an alternating rhythm, if you think of a paradiddle, um, you've got two hands, and you can, if you imagine a regular grid, one or the other, play beat um, and that you know you've got lots of different patterns I've done what the number is but da, 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 that kind of thing so the way it works is can you see my cursor yes you can so we choose chunk size of four or eight we have a pattern that's uh, currently just 16 steps long it, that's just arbitrary that's just one I chose while I was writing it um, and the idea is you generate four steps or eight steps and then replicate those steps so we can see here make pattern that bit of code so it picks a random chunk size so basically every time this script runs it generates a different pattern uh, which is fine for the moment uh, I, I'm going to add some variation here to let it mutate and change and whatever but for now it's just lets me do this that's not the bit that's interesting so I'm just giving you the context so this is running and basically we if you look here, uh, we set up uh, a little timer, and that little timer uh, runs every uh, quarter of a second, um, and we get a pulse. So uh, it's worth noting, so we've got two things here. These P phones here are just what happens when there's a beat. You can think of zero and one uh, as being left hand and right hand and it basically uses the outputs to trigger so we've got these two noise engineering modules the sync iter and cursus iter artus. um can you see it yes so the cursus goes into the mmg and the sync iter goes into the vial arena uh they both go into a low pass gate uh, and the sync iter i think goes into a delay running on the disting and then they both come out so it's, it's just the sound generation paradigm that lets me mess about uh, and be very hands-on with the sound um, and this is one of the things I quite like because I normally do all this stuff with Super Collider but Super Collider I'd have to write the sound generator too with this I can just wire up from the crow into my hardware and muck about which is nice right so that's neither here nor there that's just some sound two sounds yeah that's the functions in PFUN the important bit is this pulse function. So this runs every um, every beat. Um, and we have this tick counter that we just keep up to date. So this is what the step we're on. Uh, and every four, every quarter, every four steps, um, so just using the mod function, yeah? Every four steps, we put out two pulses on the answer ball. So the answer ball, all of these modules here 
are wired together behind the scenes uh, and they, they use um, a protocol called IC squared, which is basically, uh, it's actually a, for chips talking to each other, but it works kind of on a macro level. Uh, and Monome have embraced it. Uh, so these, these all these can talk to each other. So the crow can fire, see these lights flashing, the crow's firing those. Uh, you also see the teletype in the middle of it. If you saw my stream, I had just my mainstream junk light music. Uh, I played a piece of music using this setup uh, and teletypes running the baseline. Uh, we're not looking at it today. So we're putting these pulses out. So the top two are going, uh, are these two, pulse one, trigger pulse one, and trigger pulse two. Uh, and they're happening every fourth beat. Uh, and this trigger percent two is for the baseline. So we'd ignore that, but we're putting it out every, every two beats. And I've got another probability thing in all the things going on there. Now, the interesting thing is what happens to those two pulses. So if you look, what we're doing is we're triggering the two channels of maths. So maths is a function generator. Um, and when it triggers, so if you look, can we see the lights here? Yeah, we can. So if you see these lights blinking, when this fires, this triggers this curve, and we've got control to set the curve. What's happening then is we read in those voltages, so those curves come back into Crow. Um, so Crow triggers them, a curve happens, uh, and we, we read in the value. And the second channel, this one, we're using to alter the time between steps. Now, if you think about swing uh, in a rhythm, you do kind of a one step and then a slightly longer or slightly shorter step. Um, and you've got this kind of two, two time value. So instead of having a linear, this beat and this beat and this beat are the same value, and this beat and this one and this beat and this one and this beat and this one, the different lengths. Now, what happens if I've got this function generating and I'm using that function to modulate the time between beats. So I've got not, haven't got a regular grid. I've got a, uh, and it's just a simple function. And where I would like to go is to be able to have multi-step functions. But this occurred to me last night. This is an easy way of trying the idea out. So that's one thing. And then the second, the first channel, but the other channel, uh, I'm reading in and I'm using that as a probability on how likely it is to fire the note. Now, you can do, uh, say every single note is 50-50. That's fine. And actually putting probabilities on notes, it, it, rhythm notes is a technique I use all of the time. Uh, and that kind of produces an interesting rhythm, but you lose all the structure. So if you've got a three, four, one, two, three, four. That one is really important. Now I haven't got anything as fancy as keeping the one, I'm keeping some and not others. But if you think about it, you've got a, a structure and what if you prob have probabilities on the structure? So in between, there are things that are less likely to happen and the things that are the pillars of the rhythm are really likely to happen. You keep your structure and you've got a lot more variation. And in theory, you should get a fairly organic pattern. So that's the theory. So if we turn the probability up, um, you can hear now we can fiddle with these. So this one is my time. Oh, and I can change. And like swing, I don't know if you've played the swing at all, but uh, see, there we go, we've got a completely different kind of rhythm going on. And sometimes you can kind of get it so it's like, oh, that sounds really weird. And sometimes you can get like sweet spots. And likewise, the probability. So we kind of lost it. I mean, this, this unfortunately. But you see where I'm going with this. So we've got a feedback loop and functions. 
Um, and why am I telling you about this? Well, I think this is quite interesting. I'm really interested, I'll say, in non-linear loop, uh, non-linear off-grid, kind of whatever. Uh, and the idea here, we lost it completely now. <laughs> oh, it's because uh, we let it make a really long, a long beat. And, uh, oh, in fact, looking at the, I've got a readout over here. Looking at the readout, somehow I have managed to get it into uh, a negative space. Uh, I don't quite know how I've managed that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the idea is these kind of shifting grids that are linear, coming from patterns. Um, the reason I'm doing the documenting it is because Trent, who writes the firmware for the Crow, uh, has been doing these live streams. Um, and this is kind of in the space he's been exploring a little bit of feedback and he's doing one on rhythm this week so i just wanted to document my ideas and kind of put them out there so people are thinking about this kind of thing so where am i going with this um there's a commercial product somewhere in this that i've had in mind for well quite a while um and of course it's going to be more about the user experience than the algorithms but this is kind of the idea where i'm going for where we're generating sound, not as a drum machine, but generative rhythm uh, with controls and uh, the sound generation as well, more like modular. Anyway, long way away from that, uh, and I've got another app to get out first, but I just wanted to put these ideas out there uh, and see if they were of interest to anyone.